Hey everybody, this is Dr. Rick. Hope that you guys are having a great week. <coughs> Not gonna lie to you, this week has been immensely challenging for me. And it's probably not gonna let up for a while, uh, but I'm still in the game. I'm still alive, I'm still breathing. I choose to look forward to a brighter time and a brighter day. You know, maybe uh, I'll be up to sharing where I'm at and what I'm going through tomorrow. But as of right now, I'm just processing it. Um, <clears throat> before I get started, uh, I have to do this. We are in the middle of a fundraiser. We need so much support right now for what we're doing in the community. And the community is at a pivotal point of what we are going to do and where we're going to end up in this country and I don't think that people are taking it seriously I think that we have gotten so used to hearing doomsday messages that we don't realize the subtle progression that we are taking towards these dark times we don't realize just how bad things are getting but for someone like me who consistently and constantly keeps their fingers on the pulse of the community and on the socioeconomic movements, the geopolitical movements, the academic and educational issues, and so much more. I am extremely aware of exactly what's going on, uh, the impetus is behind it, what can be done, the strategies. I've lectured on this for years. I've written 24 books, uh, two more on deck uh, as we speak. Um, and probably a couple of more the year following that I'm contemplating. Uh, someone asked me to do my biography, my life story, and, and I'm thinking about doing that, but that definitely won't be this year. Uh, may start it next year, but, we, but I've been doing this, and so we need support in all of these areas, but the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative is huge because as our men go, so go we. And everybody knows that except us. Or even when we acknowledge that's the case, we don't see the importance of investing in young black males so that they become productive and effective black men. Uh, we spend more time complaining about the black men who don't measure up, the black men who are making mistakes, the black men who are simply completely off the reservation and everything in between. We've become professional complainers, but we will refuse to take action um, on that. I am challenging you. Support the work we do because it is going to be tremendous. First of all, we need to socialize these kids. Second of all, we need to offer wraparound services like job training, like mental health resources, like uh, job searches, uh, relocation uh, assistance, things that we are thriving to do to help people be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. That requires a network, that requires commitment, that requires resources. We have to invest in young black males in order to see strong black men. There's no way around it. They don't magically appear. They aren't born a certain way. They are developed. They are literally developed and built. And we have to start putting in the work. So again, I'm asking you to step up and do that. Didn't mean to go that long, but I think it's imperative that we really get an understanding of just where we are right now. And for the people who are referring or bringing uh, young black men and young black women, mothers. I, you know, I'm working with mothers and sons and uh, fathers. I got, you know, a few men, older men. Uh, keep coming. Uh, I know it's rough right now and the resources are minim minimal. Uh, keep coming. Uh, for those of you who can afford to pay for services, we're going to ask that you do so, so that the people who absolutely can't well, you know, won't have to be so far down the line on the list because that's where we're at right now. And 
there's a way to get to me. Plus, the way that I work with my clients moves a little differently. Uh, and so, if you can afford to pay for it, that's a different route and a better way. It's just simple uh, to get things done. Uh, and, you know, obviously, if you can't still come, I don't want anybody to feel like there's nowhere to turn. I don't know exactly how we'll do it, but we'll figure it out. Uh, that's that. Now, I just talked about this, I swear, last week. It had to be no longer than last week. Uh, another black sister, black mother, has passed away after getting a BBL in the Dominican Republic by Dr. Jose Desenia. Again, the conditions under which it happened is shady and questionable uh, and to me so unnecessary. We're going to have to deal with this level of self-hatred that is plaguing our community at a level that has us risking our lives to change who we are. There's a beauty in your uniqueness. Everybody's not meant to be built alike. This universal image that's going around to me, first of all, is unattractive. It looks fake. Even in the best you know, coverage of where the cement symmetry is on, it still looks fake. And it is creating an environment where black men are not even trusting when a woman is naturally built that way. Because the thing now is to go out and get this done. And that's one part of it that bothers me. But the big part that bothers me isn't the the while I'm concerned about the fact that you, we, we aren't happy with who we are on a grand scale, because we're doing this on a grand scale. It has become big business. And from what I could do in my research, finding my research, it's getting, you know, it's, it's, it's increasing instead of diminishing, despite the risk and the noted threats. People are still hopping on planes going over there. And that's just one country, but it's happening in a number of different countries. But this is one and this particular doctor keeps popping up. Okay. So you save your money, you know, whatever you use to come up with the money and you go over there. <clears throat> I've heard people using that tax returns, getting taken out loans and, and going over there. That's one thing that you're doing it, but you're risking your life for something that in most cases can be accomplished with self-discipline and some work. In, 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 in self-discipline and how you eat, self-discipline and how you move and be active and work out, it can be done. I have, during my years, in my first business, which is actually still going, it has definitely evolved because I don't do the personal stuff anymore. But when I was a personal trainer 30 years ago, before personal training became a popular thing and you could get all these certifications. Uh, when I was doing that, I it wasn't nothing for me to take a person who was in a size 22, 20 and get them down to a 10 and a 12. A couple of them I got down to an eight. And work, consistency, discipline. And this is before all of the new stuff that we know now that can fast track it health in a healthy manner. This is just me knowing how to put people in caloric deficit, knowing how to work them at the right amount of time, knowing what uh, heart rate to have them at to get the most out of it, and knowing what to do with them in, in the gym to sculpt. And I'm telling you, it can be done. Uh, it can be done on a number of different levels. Uh, but with that being said, we are gonna to have to learn how to love us. We're gonna to have to stop submitting to and acquiescing to the European idea of what's beautiful. To 
and, 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 and it's not so much even a European idea now. It's a social idea. There's an image on social media moving around Instagram and TikTok that says you need to be built like this. And if you're built like this, you can be an influencer. And the truth of the matter is an influencer is a person who, to me, has something of substance that he can or she can offer that changes lives. How you're built, and then I've even seen people, blows my mind, but I've seen people literally go get plastic surgery and then come back and start a fitness business. You know, teaching people how to look like that while working out while you didn't even get it that way. Uh, I've just seen it all and it's it's become a big hustle, it's become a big threat. And I think we need to learn how to love ourselves. I think that we need to definitely be healthy, have the best body we possibly can. Um, something that I'm working on. I want to get back to the fitness I was in in my late 30s, early 40s, uh, which was pretty nice. Uh, that's what I want to get back to. I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands, so that's what I'm going to focus on. Uh, we have to be willing to admit there's a problem. We have to be willing to say, you know what, something's not right. We have to be willing to sit up and invest in these young people at an age early enough to instill in them a sense of, sense of value, a sense of worth, a sense of self-esteem and self-confidence at a level that doesn't shake when they see something that doesn't acknowledge them or something that isn't in the same vein as they see themselves, that they're going to be okay with that, that they don't have to fit and be accepted by everything and everyone. We owe it to our children to protect them better. We owe it. And I'll be honest that the last two people were not babies. The one that passed away last week was 45, and this young young woman, Shakari Taylor, I believe was her name, seemed to be maybe late 20s, early 30s. Uh, had a daughter and, you know, never came back. You know, she went over with a friend. The friend's surgery seemed to have gone okay. But uh, the friend noticed she, when she was in the recovery house, she wasn't moving around. She wasn't active. And um, eventually they moved her to a clinic. She ended up on a ventilator. And then she had cardiac arrest. And, you know, her mom got up there. By the time her mom got up there, it was too late. And so now they're working on getting the body back. I think the State Department has finally gotten that squared away. But now a family is dealing with devastation and the responsibility of putting her away and planning on how to rear her daughter. Uh, I think we need to really find a place to love ourselves. We also just need to make decisions that is based on evidence and we need to consider our health when making those decisions. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and dwell on it anymore, but I had to come in because like, man, I just had this conversation. And, and here we are again. I think that we have to be more cognizant of the things that are going on. Sometimes we're so blind that we're just moving around, following and doing whatever everybody else is doing. We're not really paying attention. We're not really taking notes. We're not really gaining an understanding of what needs to be done. And I think that it's hurting us as individuals and hurting us as a collective. And I'm going to, you know, keep pushing until we get somewhere. That, uh, or until I'm gone, one of the two. Uh, once again, I'll, you know, well, thank you guys for letting me creep into your your space and your time um, and talk with you. Um, don't forget, we still need help and support for Black Man Lead. So again, I'm going to be consistently coming to you, show some love. I'm going to extend what I offered yesterday. For anybody who donates at least $100, you will get a free rapid change breakthrough session with yours truly. Uh, that's a session that's normally or uh, regularly priced at $350. You will get it for free when you donate uh, $100 to 
uh, the Black Man Lead or the Odyssey Project in general. You can do that by clicking the link or through Cash App. Uh, the organization's Cash App will be in the description box as well. Show some love, show some support. Let's make something special happen between now and summertime. Uh, and I have some ideas that I'm going to be coming to you with, and I want you to really be a part of it. Uh, but we have answers to a great deal of the enigmatic, enigmatic issues we face if we're willing to step up to the plate and do something. That is it. I am out of here. Thank you, guys. Have an awesome day.